George Miller, it's an honor for me meeting you because you are, I think, one of my idols because you are 79 and you're making such iconic movies. So where did you get your, all your ideas for that? Oh, um, it's, uh, first of all, that's nice of you to say. Um, look, I mean, um, the, uh, look, I would say two things. I'm, I'm uh, curious not only about how to make stories on, with move, moving image, but I'm interested about why we tell each other stories, why we need stories. Somehow we're hardwired for stories. So that's the first curiosity I have. The second thing is being able to work in, in, in the Mad Max world, which I only, I didn't think I'd make any more after the first couple, but I found myself being, asking myself, finding myself thinking about stories that could be based in that world. And I realized after a time is that they're base, the reason is that they're basically allegorical. And all stories, whether they're children's fairy stories or folklore or mythological stories or stories about your local football team or your family or whatever, have an allegorical, if they endure, they have an allegorical uh, quality to them. And I think this applies to the Mad Max world. It's very easy to think about the world and measure, measure those thoughts against what's happening in the present, even though they're kind of set in a dystopian future, and go back to very, very primitive early behaviors of man, basically dark ages, if you like. So all of that is a really fertile, uh, 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 it's very fertile uh, in terms of the storyscape, very fertile for us to, for me to, and, and my colleagues to mine. But also when you're looking at the pictures, the cinematog cinematography, this is, this is unique. I think you, you, you didn't find that in, in other movies, it's so well orchestrated um, this is this is this is mind blowing. So uh, I take my hat off because I would say there are many directors who are maybe 40, 45, and they didn't have this, um, I think, range that you do on this movie. It's like Fury Road and Furiosa. So um, where where do, where do you get all this um, imaginations for this for this for this big pictures for this big action scenes for all this the stuff that you're sitting in the in the cinema? She said, "Oh, this is amazing." Ah. Uh. Well, I, look, I, um, as I said, I'm interested, I'm still curious about how to tell stories as well as why. And the contents of stories are very important. The story is the important thing. And then you've got to find the right language or the correct syntax that you're going to use to tell this particular story. It varies with, with, with every story. And then, you, and then you also, one of the things that I'm always inter interested in are the tools that we have. It's, they're always changing. The diff making this film is different from, uh, from the, f the way we made Fury Road not, or, uh, not a decade ago, which was way different than the way we made the f early Mad Maxes three decades ago. So the tools are always evolving, and that's always exciting to use. Um, but I would say... I would say the thing that drives the the language of these films is the notion that film is visual music. It's it basically it it it's time based, so therefore it's rhythm based, and the rhythm of everything, the blocking, the 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 camera, everything comes comes in, 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 into play. Just just as just as the that there's always a causal relationship between one thing and the next, just as there has to be in music, between one note and the, or chord and the next. It's almost mathematical, I believe. And I think you have to pay attention to that. Uh, I, I learned that particularly when I got into animation, that the precision of the camera is really, really, really key. And... Uh, and, and uh, so all of those things go into uh, in, into the pr the process, I think. Mm -hmm. Did I have one last question? Yeah, yeah, I'll ask it, yeah. Um What was your favorite moment at the set? Did you have one, some challenging or <laughs> emotional or humbling moment during the shooting? Oh, gee. Uh, 
Uh, the, the reason I, I can't come to, to, to one is that I had many. But, but I will say there were moments when I work, saw the, the, the interaction between Furiosa and Dementis, bet, between Chris and Anya. And we'd rehearsed, we'd prepared, we wrote the, screen, uh, the, the, the screenplay, we, we rehearsed, we prepared. But then I was watching, we had two cameras on them simultaneously, and I was watching the, 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 uh, the, the screen, and I saw things happen that completely dissolved away my awareness of where I was. I was completely persuaded by what I was seeing there on the screen. I didn't even realise I was, I, I was there meant to be, as a director, meant to be watching objectively uh, uh, and, and trying to decide was that the correct way to go or what adjustments should we make. And I lost myself in their interaction. And that happened a number of times. And it still happened to, to me in the cutting room. I, th I remember those moments. I, uh, uh, but there were, there were many. I'm, 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 I'm glad to say there were many, many of those. Uh, and I, I hope that other people experience them in the same way that I did when they see the movie. Thank you so much. Yeah, Great talking to you. Yeah, Hopefully, th thanks for meeting the, you again. Yeah, they were lovely questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.